Welcome to the Throwdown. On this week's Throwdown, we have Kate Curry. TTT. Ah, oh, dang it. You, yeah, you had one line. <laughs> on he this. said no, no redos, no redos, no redos. Yeah, Brandon said we don't mess up. We got a 12-minute AMRAP of two rope climbs, 25-foot handstand walk, eight double dumbbell box step overs, 25-foot handstand walk. On this week's Throwdown, we have TTT athlete Kate Curry. Demo the workout. I know, but I, I have to make it. I, I, I can't. <laughs> He's got oh, it. Oh, Lord. Goodness. <laughs> Let's see it. Hi, I'm Kate. Okay. I'm doing TTT Throwdown. I don't know what number will come out soon. Uh, it's going to get really great. So from a strategy standpoint, I'm going to break the dumbbell box step over to try to save my grip a little bit, pace the rope climbs, and then just go for it on the handstand walks. That's all I got. This looks like a pretty good camera. It's a great camera. That's yeah. what I was thinking, too. It looks like legit. It's yeah, so clear. Yeah. I wonder if the camera's going to follow her throughout. That's what I'm sense. thinking is happening. Yeah, I think so. This is very... Uh, I'm guessing this is Cameron that's uh, recording this, her husband. Thank you. A little yeah. fight? Yeah, yeah. definitely <laughs> with the conversation. <laughs> Get the clock. Three, two, one, go. And we're off. We climb. Two rope climbs to start. All right. Um, I can't really see where the tape mark is. Do you guys see it? Mia, she's doing the non-jump, which you like. Would you I love recommend that? a non-jump. Um, yeah, I think that in something like this, maybe on your first set, if you're really good at rope climbs and you think you're going to be able to go fast on this whole workout, then you can jump into them because it's only two. But I like setting my hands at the bottom and just making sure that my arms are straight so I'm not pulling from a bent arm position and it sets me up to climb with more leg drive. What is this box right here? I've uh, never seen that. It's a rope box. You mean because it's black or because of the shape of it? I've like just that never little, seen like, that. Plastic looking It looks one. like something you'd buy at Target to like <laughs> s- reach the counters. <laughs> In, uh, <laughs> That's a rogue box. It's got yeah. a big rogue no, no, no. sign. It is rogue. Oh. And as long as the box is 15 inches by 15. I think it's 15 top, by 15. Yeah. 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 Then it is a legal box. And those are much easier to step on. So if you have one and you're doing a box step up workout, it makes sense. Yeah. The Well, I'll wait till she gets back to the rope climb. I had some thoughts on the jumping. But I agree with her that this is going to be pretty grippy. People don't anticipate because handstand walking is an open palm thing sometimes that it can blow your grip up. But being extended like that and then gripping for 12 straight minutes, I feel like most people get to the point that this is a grip limited workout. Yeah, forearms start to blow up real early in this. So make sure that you're mitigating that fatigue by being smart with how you pace the rope climbs. So basically a minute and a half round counting that transition back to the rope. And we'll see how that holds up. Pretty solid. So with the jump, so right here, she's about to stand and then she basically gets her arms all the way extended and then goes into getting her first foot clamp. When people jump, sometimes they jump and they grab onto the rope and it's actually not higher than if you reach like that. So if you are going to use the jump strategy, make sure when you jump and you make your hands onto the rope that you're actually higher than what you're just standing reaches naturally. Even though I just advocated for no jumping, I would say for Kate, because she has that little tiny pull at the top, it would be worth practicing jumping with a straight arm, like you just said, to get a couple more inches. So, so to she can, avoid that. So just she can do that or shorten your pulls. So you're doing um, three shorter pulls and not getting your legs up as high. That's how I like to climb little short choppy pulls where I'm not um, tiring my hip flexors out. She's getting her legs up pretty high, but still having to take that third pull. So I'd say either jump and make it two pulls or smaller three pulls. I really like that she broke these. I was going to ask you guys what you think about that, but it, it, everyone's going to be able to do eight for the first couple of rounds. It's easy to get into that trap where your forearms blow up and then your rope climbs slow down. So doing four and four really quick rest and then transition quick to the handstand walk is going to be really beneficial in this workout. Yeah, her break there was only five seconds with a dumbbell box step up and you can put the dumbbell on the box. The transition's not really that long if you're going to take a break. So I think it's a good move. Unless you're just going to go at full speed in this workout the whole time, which is basically like hard to yeah, do. 10 people in the world. So both of the first two rounds were exactly a minute 30, Mia? You said that first one was um, about a minute 30? Yeah, by the time she got back to the rope, and then this one was maybe a couple seconds slower, yeah. but... Really uh, good pretty pace. close. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Really good pacing so far. Now, one thing you talk about is straight arm. So when she starts up here, do you want her arms to get straight right away after she extends her legs? Or what, what do you, what's the goal with a rope climb? So I like a straight, your top hand should be perfectly straight. Your bottom 
hand is not going to be perfectly straight because that's just impossible, but as straight as you can get it. And then keeping your arms straight as you set your feet. So a critique I would give Kate is she puts her hands on straight, but then as soon as she goes to set her feet, she pulls yeah. at the same time. So I would work on leaving your arms long while you set your feet and then your arms don't bend at all until you're driving with your legs. Yeah. And we have a great YouTube video, Dude Learns Rope Climbs, Dude where learns. Mia just, talks about this. It's I, a great technique to have. I disagree. Kate, you're doing awesome. <laughs> she, Kate is doing, doing awesome. Doing. <laughs> she is. She's doing great. Kate is great. All right, another short break. Let's see, is it going to be five seconds again? Boom. I mean, yeah, it's pretty much right, right, on. right on it. Yep. Great job. And, and that, I mean, she, she's been doing this for a long time. She's a games level athlete. She's going to the Masters games this year, so she knows how to pace this. But being really diligent with your rest times, what happens typically is people break that in the first round's five seconds, and then after that, it's like eight seconds, then 15 and 20, 25. So just really be aggressive with shorter rest times. And then even if you have to break up more, maybe it's four, two, and two, that's going to be better off than taking like 30 or 40 second breaks in this, in this workout. And we haven't really talked about the handstand walk yet because she's just so fluid at it, but handstand walk volume is going to accumulate a lot in this workout. So for someone who isn't as smooth on the handstand walk as Kate, I would plan out, um, this has to be 25 feet unbroken, right? No, it can be in five foot five foot increments. Yeah. So, based on your um, tech or based Skill on your level, level, either plan out a break going into the handstand walk, and you're going to hold to that break, or where you're going to break within the handstand walk, so that you're not um, pushing failure ever on those. Because I mean, it's fifty feet each round. She just finished three. She's already one hundred fifty feet, feet deep. Yeah. yeah, and they look easy for her, but I think Mia, to your point, most people are going to really struggle with this. So you're going to have to plan your breaks. Yeah, this, I mean, she's only transitioning, uh, like, from the end of rope climb to that kick up was, like, eight seconds or less. So, and she's going unbroken pretty fast on every set. So, that's probably unrealistic for most people watching the video. Maybe you need a longer break or you, maybe you need to kick up and do 15 feet and then 10 feet. But I would not expect that most people will just be able to stay unbroken with quick transitions there. I'm pretty sure Kate has a gymnastics background. It looks like it. Really good speed on the step overs. Yeah. Um, I think that trying to do them quickly, even if you break them up more, is better than slow and grindy when you're working on uh, or when you're focusing on minimizing your grip fatigue. So if you're doing, you know, three, three, two, put the dumbbells down quickly and let your hands rest versus slow um, step ups. Yeah. You can see she has a little grippy. bit of a swing there too, which actually is pretty helpful, but it can blow up your grips. So you just got to be careful with that little pop swing to get your leg up. Yeah. It's harder on the grip, but I think, think it's easier because you get to use momentum to step up. So if you can time it right, I think most people that are at a higher level generally will have a little bit of a swing with their step ups. Yeah. We saw that in quarterfinals workout one, two, those yep. that were really efficient were going fast and they were kind of popping the dumbbells up each rep. So 645 at, at the end of round four, which means there's a little bit of a fall off in pace, which I think in a workout like this is probably expected. I think her third round was like a 10 second fall off or second round was about a 10, 20 second fall off. So that's the extra 30 seconds ish that she's over. But I think, you know, still pretty good pacing for a workout that's very grip and gymnastics limited. So as she's climbing, um, we talked about how she does the two plus the small pull. I actually think she might be able to get rid of that if she um, gets her bottom arm up higher. So you see how that bottom arm stays a little bit low. Um, I try to teach athletes to reach as high as possible with two arms. It seems like a small thing, but it can alleviate that little bit of like it, extra rope that you need at the top. It is very climbing. challenging. It's something you have For to practice sure. yeah. if you want to dial it in because mm -hmm. when you're like your clamp has to be really tight and you have to be confident that you could reach and elongate your whole body line to do it. We have some of those skills in TDD Compete that people can use too, where you're just sitting on a box, you clamp, and then you're working on reaching high with your hands. It seems kind of like, well, what's the point of this until you realize that it actually it can translate over into your rope climbs. Right details, okay. details, details. Do you disagree with that, Chris? No, man. It's all about the details. Oh, all yeah. about the details. <laughs> <laughs> the deets. All right. So eight minute mark. She about, is feeling it right now. Yeah. You can see your respiration <laughs> rate has tough. increased. Yeah. This type of workout, I feel like, is uh, it's a lot of time under tension. And generally, those make increases in heart rate and breathing gets really jacked up a little bit later in the workout. So I'd say everyone should probably be expecting that that 
happens because everything kind of requires you to be a little bit tight here. You're either holding onto the dumbbells, you're upside down and your core is tight, or you're hanging from a rope 15 feet off the ground. All of them are a little, uh, you know, high skill movements kind of. Right, where you're tension. holding, you may be holding your breath too. Yeah, and yeah. As everyone knows, if you try this, like go on the assault bike or the echo bike and hold your breath for 10 seconds and do it, and it doesn't really feel like anything, but then you get off and then your heart rate jacks up. So you need to make sure you're breathing through these movements. I never get tired. I don't even you have do. to breathe. <laughs> <laughs> you just hold your breath and everything. We know Kate very well, and we know that she's not very personable and she's rather rude actually, which and explains me. why none of these people are cheering her on, <laughs> <laughs> not even paying attention. <laughs> Uh, well, she does have a world-class videographer getting close-ups so on the wow, grip. Look at, look at that. Yeah. Love it. How come you don't film me like that, Chris? No one needs to get that close, Max. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Got to keep me at a distance. Oh, man. Don't want them to smell you. Oh. All right. well, won't that be something? Once cameras have the so smell. So you're ready to see oh, proof no. that Gets she was a gymnast? Phone. You see the toe point? Yeah. Yes. Gymnast. You're so right. <laughs> The handstand walks have looked basically the same the entire time. There's one round where she had a little fumble halfway through, but all of these are pretty fast. I really like her body line. She does a good job of keeping her hips over her shoulders, and then she um, just lets her feet hang over versus what a lot of athletes will do is they'll let their whole leg hang, which um, puts a lot of strain on your lower back. So if you can keep your shoulders, hips, knees in a straight line and just let the bottom part of your leg hang over, it's way easier to breathe. It's also easy then to manipulate your speed. If you need to slow down or restack or speed yourself up, you can do that. Or catch yourself if you're about to yeah, fall over. Exactly. Yeah. Something to note just in general, I, we talk about pacing a lot. Like there was just the pace test video that was just released as part of a cycle. And I think it's an important part of the sport. Generally with pacing, you want to try to like negative split or go linear across. But in workouts like this, I think there's always a little bit of a fall off. It's just kind of impossible to do that. So when you're kind of planning this, expect that you're almost going out a little hot in a workout like this. And then your rest time between movements or your break in the box will just get a little bit longer. But your movement speed should try to stay the same throughout. You don't want your rope climbs taking much longer or you don't want to be holding on to the handstand walk for an extra five seconds per walk but you'll still have positive splits because you'll just rest a little bit longer between yeah, the transitions will take a little bit longer. exactly too. yeah so we're about a minute and in a workout like this it's not like you have the same type of finishing kick if it was ending on a rower for example so you be mindful of the clock and where you finish but you're probably not sprinting through the finish line in a workout that's high skilled gymnastics do, do a lot of people have the slide down technique down at this point? Uh, I think a decent amount of competitors, especially at super the games crucial? level. crucial? We've definitely yes. worked on it in compete because we've seen how important. I mean, Travis does such a good job at this. He's about the same up the rope as a lot of high-level athletes, but he's so fast down the rope that he's making up three or four seconds of rope climb, which is a big deal. Yeah, the speed down is a huge skill. I think the it's... Only a huge skill, though, if you have the capacity for yes. the skill to be a separator for you. If you're failing and your grip's failing, maybe not as much. Ooh, go, he's Kate. got the cheering. She's going to hang yeah. on. Somebody's cheering. Yeah, really good to know where she is on the clock and to keep these unbroken. Three, two, one. Oh. The pace was awesome, too. Oh, I'll give it to her. <laughs> By the way, that lion in the back is pretty cool painted on the wall. Just FYI. I can't see it. Oh, there it is. Let's Color see. lion. What does she say? You gonna give your thoughts? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In a second. <laughs> yeah. Leave me alone. This should be. Ooh, it was grippy. <laughs> <laughs> this should be something that we rank in every throwdown video: is how long after the throwdown are they recovered enough to give their thoughts? She's gonna be under a minute, I think. Come on, Kate. Come on, you can do it. I got more metabolic than I was. Anticipating. I, uh, I'm glad I broke the dumbbell lock step over. I don't think holding onto those unbroken would have been smart. I would have wasted a lot of time. I think it's about like capitalizing on your strengths. So like if you're really good at rope climbs, which I'm not, we've been working on this a lot. <laughs> Like if you can push those, push those to give yourself a little time on something you might struggle with. So like, I tried to take advantage of my handstand walk. It was fun though. I'm tired. 
Oh, that was good. Have fun. It was that definitely was good. Yeah, that was really good. Good energy. <laughs> Thank we you. appreciate you. It's a wrap, you know what I'm saying? Your boy Project Pata and this thing, man. Hey, look, man. Thank y'all for watching Train Think Tank YouTube channel. Y'all hit that motherfucking subscribe button, you know what I'm saying? So y'all go ahead, man. Thank y'all for watching the channel, you know what I'm saying? Hit that motherfucking subscribe button. Let it be known what it be known what it be known, you know what I'm saying? Pata.